big, the Eagles gifted quarterback Randall Cunningham orchestrated his fourth quarter magic in one of the most remarkable comebacks of the 80s. It was a thriller at RFK Stadium as the Redskins were stunned when a miracle fumble lateral set up the Eagles' winning score. When you win a game like that, it's the kind of victory which makes a team think they can do the impossible. And the impossible just may be a trip to the Super Bowl. From the vet in Philadelphia, it's a rematch. NFC Eastern battle, the Washington Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles before the usual sellout crowd. Both of these teams needing a win as they continue to chase the New York Giants. The Giants playing out west against the Rams later on CBS. Philadelphia two back and the Redskins have lost three of their last four. A perfect November afternoon, nearly 60 degrees, a brisk breeze out of the Northwest. Might be a factor today at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Hi once again everybody, Vern Lundquist along with Terry Bradshaw. Both these teams obviously need a victory, Terry, but Joe Gibbs and Buddy Ryan are preaching different styles and what this victory would mean to the two. Yeah, and and I understand why Joe Gibbs is preaching what he's preaching. A little surprised by it, though. But let me explain what Vern's saying is Buddy Ryan is telling his team that this game, we must approach this game as a must win. This is a playoff game, fellas. We cannot lose another game or we're going to be three games behind the Giants provided they win today on the coast. Joe Gibbs, on the other hand, says we just want to win a game. We just we just want to win a game. Forget playoffs, forget everything, and let's just try to go out and win a game. If they're going to do it, the Redskins, that is, they must do it behind a very young offensive line. That's where the injuries have really crippled Washington. And Philadelphia's offensive line gave up five sacks in San Diego last week. And, and, and when you think of the Redskins, you think of the Hogs, and now three of them are out, and two of them are playing in different positions. And as, as a football player, I, I wonder what's going to happen to the Redskins' famous counter tray. Will they pull it from the right side with Schlereth leading, or will they go from the left side? I don't know what's going to happen. We'll have to wait and see. Doug Williams is going nowhere. He's going to stay in the pocket, and these three kids have really got to do a job and protect him today. The Eagles, hey. Five sacks last week, maybe a little bit of finger pointing going on, but today, Randall Cunningham, who the Redskins say, keep him in the pocket. That's where we like him. He's not as good in the pocket. Folks, all he did was throw for 447 yards and five touchdowns the last time. In that last game, 42-37, Randall Cunningham with the five TDs and a miracle comeback. They were down 37, or rather down by nine with 3.06 to go in the game, and they wound up winning it. Since that time, however, Philadelphia has gone just four wins and three defeats, and the Redskins, as I think most of you know, have lost three of their last four, including their last two, and the Redskins have not beaten a team with a winning record since last year when they knocked off Philadelphia. Chip Lowmiller will kick off to the Philadelphia Eagles, who won the toss. Henry Gizmo Williams is the middleman of three deep, and we're underway. At the goal line, bobbled. And in trouble at the nine yard line. Williams in his first year in the National Football League. And here comes Randall Cunningham. 2,000 yards already, 14 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, but five of those TDs came in. Week number two, Darwin Shad, Alexander Solt, Heller Jimmy Giles gets the start for an injured Keith Jackson who will not play today. And the wide receivers, Ron Johnson and Chris Carter, Carlos Carson, just added to the team on Wednesday, will be the third wide receiver in passing down. Trap play inside, Anthony Tony out near the 15-yard line with a rumble on first down. Tackle made by Tracy Rocker, number 99. The Redskin defense, and there is one change. Man, Rocker, Grant, and Manley up front. The linebackers with Minuski in the middle. Olkowitz might be back next week. And the change comes at cornerback, where Martin Mayhew will replace Brian Davis. That is a change that was announced just a half an hour before the game started. It is simply a coaching decision. He fires on the power sweep after the toss around the right side. That brings up the third down. 
as he's tackled again by Tracy Rocker gets uh, out near the 17 yard line. One of the things Vern in this game that Randall Cunningham was concerned about is third down. First two games of the year I believe these Eagles were well over 50 percent in their conversions and in the last five games have been over, have been less than 30 percent and he said I hope we don't just come out and go run run pass run run pass well two runs and now a pass probably third and two flags are down let's see if the Redskins encroached and if they did if the change in cadence Drew them offside. It'll be a first down. Dale Hamer is the referee. Yeah, that's a great job by Cunningham because you heard the voice inflection way up here. Yep. He changed his voice inflection and went to a higher and longer cadence. When you do that, you get out of your rhythm and the defense picks it up. Then all of a sudden you change that and then they come flying off the football and that's what happened to the Redskins. Offside, defense, number 58, five-yard penalty, first down. One of the things you have to be concerned about as a quarterback, notice the shoulder and head movement. Now, this could very well have gone against Randall Cunningham because, folks, you have to be still. If you move your head and shoulder like that, they can call that encroachment on you. First and ten, Philadelphia. Cunningham has said that he does not like to turn his back on the defense and this is one of the reasons when you turn your back and play action you lose sight of everything man coming in 77 actually grant that is he comes in forces Cunningham out of the pocket and, and right now Cunningham has to say I hope this isn't the same thing we're going to go through the day that we did against the Chargers Doug Williams gets the start at quarterback for the Redskins Ernest Byron, Jamie Morris in the backfield Riggs is out for the next couple of weeks with a sore arch First down and 10 after the first turnover of the game. Williams in his second start of the season. Jamie Morris hops through and then is hit by Wes Hopkins as he gets to the 17-yard line. Williams is the starter quarterback, and this is a brand new offensive line for all practical purposes. As Lachey is out, Grimm is out, Mark Schlereth gets his first NFL start at right guard. He becomes the first native-born Alaskan to ever start and play in the National Football League. Morris, Monk, Sanders, and Clark at the skill positions. It's second down. No score. 12.40 to go. First quarter. Morris again. Oh, nailed Andre Waters. Was the first man there, and then some help from Jerome Brown. Andre Waters is 20. This is the, notice the three linemen. This is the 46, the Eagles run. Andre Waters is the man you have to keep your eyes on. No one comes up inside. Actually, it was attempted block by Biner on him, but Waters got around, got into the backfield, and knocked Morris for a loss. Three tight end set now, and the Eagles adjust third and four. Biner starts in motion now. Mike Tice, who starts in place of the injured Don Warren, goes tight to the right side. Williams kept incomplete fourth down and Chip Lowmiller who is perfect this year inside of 40 yards will come on Reggie White doing the chasing one of the things you'd like to do as a quarterback if you're rolling out like that Vern is get as much separation from the defensive line as you possibly can one of the reasons is if you have to throw a short pass over a defensive line when you need to get further back behind the line of scrimmage that time Doug Williams out got a little flat through the ball and defensive ends are taught to get their hands up once they no longer can rush the passer good job by White low Miller 14 of 14 inside the 40 for the season Make it 15 of 15 from 34 yards out. And a player is down. A player is down on the 20-yard line. Kobe and uh, Raven Caldwell and his teammates immediately gestured to the bench to get help out on the field. And the medical staff is out there right now. This is Jacoby here playing right guard on the field goal team. So goes down inside his own looks like the center actually with the drive blocked by Jerome Brown pushed Brown pushed that time Bostic into the left leg of Jacoby and it looks like the leg was just caught laid out there. 
Ray Brown will be the backup number 67 and with Ray Brown in there at right tackle that will mean that the Redskins will go with four new players in the offensive line the only regular will be Jeff Bostic the center now, and another key point here is the fact that Russ Grimm who is injured is suited today but he is a backup he can't go but right now Dave Harbor is the only other offensive lineman that the Redskins have in case someone else goes down and he is a center a backup third string center so we got the, the Redskins have a real problem now if someone else should be injured in this game in their offensive line can imagine what's happened uh, in that front line the last time Terry and I did this game in week two Lachey Grimm Bostic May Jacoby and Don Warren were the starters and now it's Simmons Ed Simmons Raleigh McKenzie Bostic is still there Mark Schlereth Ray Brown now comes in at right tackle and Mike Tice is the tight end Joe Jacoby now in his ninth year but well bless him at least he's able to smile just a little bit Terry well the shock of injuries when initially they happened the first thing as a player you think of is my God how bad is it because you're the only one that knows the pain tells you how bad it is and then automatically think how long will it take me to get over this how long will it, will it take me to get well is it a career ending injury I mean all of this honest to goodness all of this goes through your mind while you're sitting there while they're working on you you go through the whole scenario of of that injury and what kind of effect it's going to have on you your family your life. Joe Gibbs said this has been one of the toughest weeks of his career. And it just got a little bit worse as Joe Jacoby will be assisted from the field. Time is out. Redskin right tackle Joe Jacoby has been taken to the locker room by the medical staff. And now Chip Lowmiller will kick off for the second time in the ball game. Three nothing Redskins lead. Oh this is a dandy. That will be a touchback sailing all the way through the end zone. And Randall Cunningham will uh, take his offensive unit onto the field at the 20 yard line for the second time. In warm-ups, Vern, you were talking about Low Miller's kickoff into the end zone. That wind is coming at his back. That feels like a breeze of probably anywhere around 20 miles an hour, 20 to 30 miles in the gust. And so Cunningham actually will be throwing into a heavy gust. The wind will be in his face. First down and 10, 3 0. Redskins lead it. Washington 4 and 5 against Philadelphia 6 and 3 record. Tony. For a couple, Alvin Walton, number 40, is a part of the time. Greg Minuski, number 91, also there. Eagles, of course, last week. Now Minuski will head out as defensive changes are made. Raven Caldwell will also head to the sideline. Minuski is replacing the injured Neil Okowitz, and Joe Gibbs said he expected him back next week. Second down and eight. down Eagles at the 37 a gain of 15 yards on the left side with Matt Darwin and Mike Shad handling Dexter Manley going right at Dexter Manley second down and long automatically you saw the replacements two linebackers out two deep in, two defensive backs in obviously Redskins thinking pass but what a great call by Ted Plum to run the football run it right at Manley Mike Shad, number 79, got the key block. It's first down and 10, Philadelphia. Fires and right guard. And doesn't pick up much. By the way, the word from the locker room now on Joe Jacoby, a dislocated left kneecap. Dislocated left kneecap. Interesting, Terry, we were talking with uh, Ted Plum, the offensive coordinator of the Eagles yesterday, and he said, Philadelphia has gone back and scouted themselves over the last four games. We did the game in Denver two weeks ago when they ran 13 consecutive plays on their opening drive. He said they wanted to mix it up in the first quarter now because they have shown such an obvious tendency to run a lot. And here they will throw on first down. Cunningham off his back foot incomplete. 
And the coverage from Todd Bowles, number 23. Right. You, to go and just go a little further with what Plum told us, the reason for the switch up was that teams knew that they were running more in the first quarter and then throwing more in the second. They want to switch that around and they'll have more blend. That is, the Eagles will have more passing in the first quarter. At least that's what they hope to do. Come out and throw more and kind of throw the computer, give it a little curveball. The newest of the Eagles has joined the lineup now. Number 87, Carlos Carson, just picked on waivers. Third and six in the last two games, third and six or more. Philadelphia just three of 16. Blitz coming. Cunningham with a man right in his face. Goes deep for Carson, incomplete. Monty Coleman, number 51, drew a bead on Randall Cunningham, and Cunningham is in shock as he gets up. Well, Cunningham's in shock. Carson was the intended receiver, but I told you the wind is in Cunningham's face, and he had to unload that ball as he knew that Coleman was six to hit him. That ball just fell dead in the middle of the field. Normally, without the wind blowing, that pass would have gone another 15 yards downfield. John Tilchik is on the punt. And Joe Howard is the deep man. Take a lateral bounce and go out of bounds at the 27-yard line, and Washington will get it for the second time. They have a three-nothing lead on a 34-yard field goal. Has been known throughout the league for years as the Hogs. They have now earned a reputation as the Piglets. The youngsters are in there now. Simmons at left tackle, McKenzie at left guard, Bostic is the old timer, Ray Brown, and Mark Schlereth. Don Warren is also out. There's Bostic over the ball. And Doug Williams is in the quarterback. Gary Clark starts in motion. Three-step drop. Williams across the middle. Finds Jamie Morris for a bunch out to the 45-yard line. A gain of 17. A lot of pressure on an offensive line, especially an in inexperienced offensive line, when the quarterback, Williams, takes a shallow drop. Notice one, two, three. A lot of pressure on a young line, but a good job by Williams of looking to his left, coming back to his safety valve that time, Morris. Morris makes the catch, sprints up the field for the first down. 17-yard gain and a first down at the 45. The Redskins lead it by three, three-nothing. 8.44 to go, first half of play, first quarter of play. Morris comes left, tries to cut it back inside. Just an unusual side note to this game, some of the members of the Eagle defense are going to be fined for violation of the uniform code in the league. Look at the black shoes. Reggie White with black high tops. He's not worn those before today. Seth Joyner also has them on. Clyde Simmons has them on. Steve Kafusi has them on. They're going to get fined. Bro. Right, and who's going to tell Reggie White he can't wear black shoes? Guarantee you one thing, the rest of the Eagles will have to conform to his shoes. Everyone will be wearing black shoes because Reggie does what Reggie wants to do. Reggie said, when asked about the shoes, it's something we just had to do. <laughs> Ernest Finer starts in motion, draw play. They come to the left side. Well, that's the counter tray, Vern, going back to the left. Now, it's the counter tray to the left the Redskins run now. That wasn't very successful. So now they'll have to find out their combination of Simmons and McKenzie, and they'll have to go counter tray right. Notice the slant down on the right of your screen, and then the left, the right tackle and right guard pulling. That's the counter tray. Now, one thing different. With Riggs out, you lose your power back. You don't have the guy that can break tackles. So the offense of the Redskins will have to become more of a sweep, more of a trap, quick striking offense. Third down and four. They load it up on the right side. Williams, there's a dash package, and he goes to the right. Sammy Lilly got a hand up and knocked it away. And now he'll uh, salute the crowd in the end zone. Well, Sammy's certainly happy. Certainly is. It'll be fourth down. It's a great job by Lilly that time. The receiver had come open earlier. Williams was looking deeper and then picked up his secondary receiver, and Lilly broke on Williams' eyes and knocked the ball down. Mojeko with that great punting average, but the Redskins have been giving up 11.6 yards per punt return. Now let's see what Henry Williams can do. Oh, maybe not anything. This will go over his head. 
That makes it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's good for the average and the net average. Yes. There is the ultimate in a non-issue. <laughs> Mojenko puts it in the end zone for a touchback. Winds are gusting somewhere to 25 to 30 miles an hour out of the northwest. And a, one more side note to this game. The goalpost is out of whack at uh, the left end zone. The far upright is some four inches farther back than the left upright. Now, both coaches were made aware of that problem. To correct it would take a weld at the base. And Art McNally, the supervisor of officials of the league, is here. They uh, met with Joe Gibbs and Buddy Ryan, said, here's the way it is. We can't fix it today. And both coaches said, play it as it lays. Rubber the green, as they would say in golf. Or as it stands. As it stands, yes. Anthony Tony. And he's out to the 24-yard line. Charles Mann, number 71, made the tackle. Minnesota has increased its lead over Tampa Bay. Chicago leading Pittsburgh by seven. Kurt Govea has come in now and replaced Greg Minuski at middle linebacker. Don't know whether that's an injury or not. Minuski did go out uh, on the first series of the ball game. Well, Govea is a better cover man than Minuski, and that's the reason Minuski goes out in passing situations and they bring Govea in. Second and seven, fumble. Oh, boy. Same thing last week against the Chargers, and when you see quarterback exchange and center in the quarterback, you got to think concentration isn't there because it's just something that doesn't happen. You've done it thousands and thousands of times in preseason and all these games and training camp, and you just don't make mistakes like that. It looks as though Cunningham pulls out. It doesn't look. It looked like everyone else was going on the ball, but Randall had pulled out. I tell you, this is going to sound silly, but could Cunningham have forgotten the snap count? Well, I don't know. We'll have to ask him. I mean, it's always a possibility. I wouldn't want to say that. No, but, but it looked like he. But, it, can, it does happen. It looked like he pulled out early. Right side, Carlos Carson tipped and incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And this crowd, which has gone restless despite a 6-3 and three record, and they will boo Santa Claus in this town. They've done it before. Here's Carlos Carson. One of the fine receivers running deep routes is Carson, but to understand one thing, he has not played against the NFC quarterbacks. He's been in the AFC. He doesn't know these guys, and what he has to do, he's coming in on third down. He can't set a cornerback up. He's coming in fresh and has to just guess as to what that cornerback's going to do and how he's going to cover him. John Tilchik to punt to Joe Howard. At 35 to go. In the first quarter of play. Jamie Morris to the 50-yard line. This is a, a Redskin running attack that is playing without Gerald Riggs. He had 221 yards against Philadelphia in week two. They've had real serious running problems the last couple of weeks. Haven't done a thing running. They have thrown the football a lot, only 71 yards total running, combined running in the last two weeks. And Gibbs would like to get back to rushing, but when you have four brand new starting offensive linemen, that explains the reason why the Redskins haven't been able to run the ball. Second down and three. That'll be short of the first down at the 49-yard line. That's the wide, the wide running is place to go with small backs. The idea is to take their speed and get them wide. You look at the Eagles benches, you can tell Darwin there in Remington wondering what's going on. Shad, Mike Shad, the left guard, talking it over. Trying to figure out, hey, why are we fumbling? Why are we stinking the joint up? And boy, it's hard to push a button and really gain your confidence. You have to work confidence in. Third and two, Washington with a 3 0 lead late first quarter. Motion on the near side. This will be against the Redskins. And so the option will be with. The Philadelphia Eagles, in all likelihood, they will decline it and take the punt on fourth down. Jerome Brown back in Doug Williams' face. Oh, my goodness. I beg your pardon. I saw a movement on the uh, left side of the uh, offense for Washington. Offside, defense, number 52, five yard penalty, first down. That's Jesse Small. Man, what a 
I, that's something you just hate. You give a guy, you give a team life, and you give them a first down by a, a defensive mistake, a penalty, and, and especially an offside. You know, you just watch the football in crucial situations. You just watch the football. Don't pay any attention to anything else. Don't get too excited. Man, to give an offside and give a team a first down is inexcusable. First and ten, second time. By the D Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Bert Lundquist, Terry Bradshaw from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The Redskins lead it 3 0 as we begin the second quarter, and they have a first down at their own 47 yard line. Ray Brown replaced Joe Jacoby. There's Mark Schlereth from Anchorage, Alaska, by way of the University of Idaho, number 69, getting his first NFL start. This game, by the way, is being televised in Anchorage today, and Mark's mother and dad are back there watching some four hours behind us, so it's uh, mid morning in Anchorage. First down and ten. High formation with Bina the uh, up back. Williams with an audible. Waters coming on the blitz. They sneak it through on the right side. Jamie Morris and now a flag flies from way over on the near side of the field. So we'll check the infraction. It'll be against the Redskins. An interesting matchup today will be between Andre Waters and Doug Williams. Mm -hmm. And Doug Williams will be keying. Holding number 76 of the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Ed Simmons who is starting in Jim Lachey's spot at left tackle. And as Terry said Russ Grimm is also not going to play today except in dire dire emergency. Yeah. Andre but, Waters and, and and Williams and Williams will be keying Waters for man and zone waters today is the quarterback's key as to what the defense is doing and if waters blitzes then it's Williams responsibility to throw to the receiver to the side that waters will be blitzing from so we'll be watching that to see exactly how it goes first and 20 draw play there's the counter tray again second time they've run it and Ernest Biner fights and scraps his way across the 45. Let's watch Mark Schlereth, the rookie from uh, the University of Idaho, number 69. Counter tray was run left to right early. Not much there. Now Schlereth will be leading at guard. Notice 69, a key. He's the kick out block, and then the tackle follows in behind. Good job. Interesting. He said yesterday that at Robert Service High School in Anchorage, they ran the counter tray with his head coach, Jim McGee. They played a seven-game season up in Anchorage. They had to quit in October because he said the Gatorade froze about that time. <laughs> Second down and 10. Ernest Biner inside the 50 near the 48. Let's check in with Mark Schlereth again. He's matched up against Mike Pitts for much of the afternoon. There are a lot of ways to help an offensive lineman get his block, and one of them is to fake a pass and then have a run, and this is a draw that's run. Nice job, Slayer. has got his arm outside of Pitts, learned how to hold early in his career out of, <laughs> out of Alaska, but that's okay. You know, if you hold and you get away with it, big deal. Everybody does it, but once again, the run, the fake pass draw helps an offensive lineman set up his blocks. Third and four. Redskins haven't converted the third down yet. Now that might be enough for it. Yes, for the 41 yard line. The pass complete. Isn't that amazing that. And oh, Larith and Pitts. And Biner and Pitts go after each other. Now Jerome Brown. And help comes from the bench. I don't know what's wrong with Biner, but Biner's crazy. He's a little bitty guy. That Pitts is a big guy. Well, it started not with Biner, but Biner came in late. It was Mark Schlereth from Anchorage, Alaska, and Mike Pitts from Alabama. Well, let's look and check out Schlereth and see what happened. 69 coming inside on Pitts. There's the left hand grabbing the jersey, so I know that's making Pitts mad. Now back to the inside. Now Pitts has had enough of the holding, and he's going to check out the young guy and find out what he's made of. And I don't see any back down from Schlereth. Oh, right arm slug, and now Biner. Now this is where I said this is crazy. Conduct. Number 74 of the offense. I'm sorry. Number 76 of the offense. 74 of the defense. The penalties offset. Third down. Well, it was obviously 69 instead of 76. Now Doug Williams is saying, wait a minute. Pitts 
through the first punch. Now, and he calls his offensive line back together. The thing to do is to get him in the huddle and call a play and forget about it. That's as a, as a quarterback, you know, since dwelling on it, Simmons, number one, you're not even, you're, you're free. You're not even part of this. It's Slareth, the young guy. Yeah, it wasn't Simmons at all. No, you're okay. You're <laughs> fine. Don't worry about it. There's our guy. There's our, our Alaskan guy. He's probably mad because it's not snowing and, and freezing and muddy here. Well, just to follow up on the Schlera story, he did take a recruiting trip. He got offers from two schools, Hawaii and Idaho. He visited Hawaii. Smart guy. Turned it down. He said the weather was too nice. <laughs> he was used to weather of a different sort, so he went to the University of Idaho. What kind of guy? Williams, deep, incomplete. Ricky Sanders at the goal line. What a pretty play from both ends, offensively and defensively. Well, the play action was designed, to, this case, not so much for the linebackers to hold them because this is a one-man route, really. It's designed to get the safety out of the middle so that Doug can throw the post to Sanders. There's Sanders setting up Eric Allen. Allen doing a good job. The only difference in this pass is the post isn't there. Almost a great catch. What Doug could have done is drill the ball and led that time Ricky Sanders back in the middle and let him adjust on the ball and make the grab. Second down and 10. 3-0. Clark starts in motion. complete inside the 30. Ricky Sanders with the grab. That's enough for another Redskin first down. Second down passing is, is the hardest down for a secondary to cover, especially if it's 10 yards, because what? if you play underneath it, then he goes over behind you. If it's second and short, it's easy. You know the guy's got to get four yards, and they're going to run five yards. But at 10, they might go 15 and work back. But that time, just down and turn around. Really puts a lot of pressure on a secondary when they need 10 or 15 yards. First down and 10 now. Quick count. The middle linebacker. The hammer. <laughs> said he wants to be an actor when his professional football career is over. And he said, you know, an actor like the hammer. Absolutely. Fred Williams. 56. Counter tray, nice lead. Jamie Moore's coming inside, and there's the hammer. Maybe that's his nickname. Maybe we ought to name him the hammer. Interesting. Byron Evans, we were talking. Terry asked him yesterday about the change he goes through from the time he arrives at the stadium until he suits up for the game. He said it's kind of like starting out with Beethoven on your radio in the morning and winding up with hard rock just before the game starts. Biner. And Clyde Simmons, who has really come on this year. If you're going to run to the right, you have to be able to seal back to the left. The left lineman, the tackle and the guard and the center have to block back to the left. This is the counter tray to the right. It's imperative that your left side block back and seal. That time no one blocked Simmons. He came free and made the stop. That's the only way you stop the counter tray from the back side is if people don't block you. They don't seal off. Monk goes wide to the left on third and 14. That's Tice in motion followed by Joyner. They roll it left, and Williams is sacked. Great job in the secondary. The Eagles, everyone was covered. Doug Williams tells you, the one thing I hate I don't have anymore in my career is my legs. I can't run like Rendell Cunningham. Notice he comes out. It's a set-up pocket outside, but a good job by Simmons, who broke down the pocket and forced Williams inside. And also takes them out of field goal range, and that brings on Moshenko to punt. Nice and high. Williams with a fair catch. And it takes a redskin hop, and Gavea downs it inside the five at the two-yard line. That is the 15th time this year that Moshenko has downed one inside the 20-yard line. He leads the league in that category. The Eagles get the ball back, and they trail by three. 
body. 86 Washington yards. Doug Williams, four of eight. Philadelphia with only 26 yards rushing thus far. Terry, it strikes me the young Redskin offensive line has played well. The Eagles are struggling offensively so well, they're far. They're, there's no continuity in their offense. They're not able to run the ball well. They haven't been able to throw the football well. And when you don't do either, I mean, you're stranded. Now look where they're starting from. Byers pops it over left guard out across the five near the seven-yard line. Very hard for a quarterback of the, of the talent and ability that Cunningham has having to adjust from wide open freewheeling style of offense in the first two weeks of the of the season to now go to a ball control offense when you have a thoroughbred it's hard to make him a cutting horse and it's very hard but it's also important for Cunningham to learn how to handle this offense because I think this is the offense that the Eagles are going to stay with if they're going to win championships you got to be able to run it and you got to be able to mix it up so you don't disagree with the philosophy that they no have. no not at all. I just understand what Cunningham's going through. Mm -hmm. Second down. They'll try the left tackle spot again. And he racked him up at the seven-yard line. And I understand the play calling. You're backed up. Your team's not playing well. Do you play conservative? Sure you do. You don't want to give a cheap touchdown here to the Washington Redskins. But you hope you can drive it out, get a little fill position to where you can open up your offense. You're limited in an offensive uh, uh, play calling when you're backed up. There are very few things you can do. You have no time to throw deep routes because you're going to drop back into the end zone. And if you do throw deep routes, you throw a five-yard pass hoping the receiver will run the extra 10 or 15 to get the first down. Ken Reeves is in at the uh, left tackle spot for Matt Darwin. No injury report so far. And out the shotgun, Cunningham. Delivers to Carter and it's incomplete. And the booze will descend yet once more. As Randall Cunningham comes to the near side. And that means John Telchik, who had a 14 yard punt last time out, will be kicking into this swirling breeze. Well, the breeze is actually behind him. Yeah, it's him. behind him now. You're right. It's well, it is If you look at the flags, it looks <laughs> like it's in his face, but it's actually behind him now. Joe Howard waits at the 50. Not a good punt. Howard, 49-yard line. Out of the tackle. And down to the 42-yard line. So the Redskins not only get it back, they get it back in great shape. A 44-yard punt. Joe Howard returned at eight. And the fans are getting unhappy. Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw. For those of you who were watching the New Orleans-New England game, our score is 3-0. Washington leads it with 8-15 to go in the first half. We want to advise those of you who were watching that game that we have lost all power to our remote truck in the New England Stadium. And as soon as we get it back, you will be sent back to that game. In the meantime, Enjoy this one. And off to the right side, Jamie Morris, who has had a big day thus far, makes it even larger. Boy, he's running well. And they did it out of the three tight end set that time. With Riggs out, the, the offense changes. With these young people in the offensive line for the Redskins, the philosophy changes. And the really a credit to Gibbs be able to take his offense from an inside tackle offense to now to a wide offense. Notice the good read that by Morris. Now he bounces outside. The speed with these backs, Biner and Morris, is an outside running game. When, when Riggs is in, now it's the power game. It's inside, in between the tackles. They measure for the first down, and they come up just short. Terry, I think back to the conversation we had with Mike Pitts of the Eagles yesterday when he said, the key for us is to dominate the line of scrimmage. We think we can and should, and they have not done so thus far. Well, they haven't. There's Mike Pitts. Interesting, he uh, was uh, preparing to go, of course, against the All-Pro Mark May, and then May was injured, is out for the year. Mike said, I don't uh, know anything about either Ray Brown or Mark Schlereth. I've never seen any film on either one of them. So it's uh, simply a matter of adjusting during the game. Here's Jamie Morris, who slips out of a tackle from Rick. Rick Hager, number 54, and goes to the left. Hager getting a lot of action today, extensively for the first time. Well, you'll see Hager in early, and then you'll see him go out. He'll be playing in and out. Once again, Hager is a quickest kid out of Texas that everybody's been waiting to come on, but he's Buddy Ryan's kind of guy, smart, 
quick, and once he gets there, he delivers the big hit. Number three draft choice. He has uh, replaced Reichenbach defensively now on three tight end situations for the Redskins. Now third and short. Biner comes out wide to the right. Dyson Orr, tight right. Morris. Oh, gets, hits him, and shoves him back. That will be close for the first down yardage. Byron Evans, also a part of the tackle. Mike Pitts. Pitts, one of the things he said about the loss to San Diego is that he thought that perhaps their defensive scheme was too complicated, and he said this week it's going to be much simpler. When, it, when things are simpler, what that simply means is you have less to think about, and then you work more on fewer things to where they are, you excel at them. And I think sometimes as coaches, as you can see there, they're short of the first down. But it, as coaches, I think sometimes we think or they think that more is better, but according to Pitts, that's not the case. Joe Gibbs says we need a win. And as a part of his effort to get one, they're going to go for it. Don Bro looks on. Thus far this year, the Redskins are three of nine on fourth down conversions. The Eagles are two of seven in allowing them. They've allowed only two of seven. Fourth and one. Play fake. Man wide open. Jimmy Johnson makes the catch, the rookie from Howard. And he had a touchdown, but Williams overthrew him. And Johnson made a heck of a grab. Well, the wind in Williams' face, you either take a little off of the ball, and if you do that, the ball might go down in the ground. And Doug Williams thinking, I've got to gun this thing at him, and the ball slides a little bit out of his hand. Great call. There's the play action. Fools everyone. Reichenbach turns around and says, oh, my God, Jimmy Johnson's my man. He runs back there, but a great catch by Johnson. The play action. Notice the fake. Seth Joyner, everyone coming up inside, and I mean wide open, is Johnson down the field. Great call. And a terrific catch, only his fourth of the year, first and goal. They surge at the right side, and fighting for yardage down to the two-yard line, Morris. You know what makes that call even greater? With four young kids in there, what a great gutsy call by Gibbs to know that he's got an inexperienced offensive line, and to run it, I would say, hey, that, that's okay, not any mistakes on a run, but to do a play action to put that kind of pressure on those young linemen really says a lot for Gibbs and the confidence that he has in his young backup lineman now starting. 28 nothing as the Saints continue to roll over New England. It'll be second down and goal. Morris with 48 yards on 14 carries. He's within two of the total rushing yards the Redskins had last week. Here's Morris, no, Seth Joyner, and Andre Waters collaborate on that defensive play. Buddy Ryan's team leads the league in fewest rushing touchdowns allowed. They've only given up three in the first nine games this year. 49ers are next, and then the Jets, New England, and New Orleans. And now it'll be third from the one. That's all, that can be misleading, too, because so many teams feel like they can throw. You know, that's like, well, you've got a great pass defense. Yeah, it's because we've got a bad run defense, and everybody's running the ball on us. The Piglets at the line of scrimmage. That's Terry Orr. That's Ernest Biner. That's a touchdown. Where do you run the ball on the goal line? You run vertical. You go straight away. You don't go horizontal. This time, the skin straight off the ball, give the ball to Morris or to Biner. What does Biner do? Just turns it to the left, gets in beside his tight end or, and just cranks it in the end zone. Look at Williams celebrating. Low Miller on for the extra point. 4.45 before halftime. Flag is down. Two flags are down. The point is good if it stands. That's, that's going to be offsides against Philadelphia, I think, Vern. Here's Dale Hamer. Offside, number 46 of the defense. Kick is good. Izell Jenkins is the man who is offside. 
Ernest Miner gets his second rushing touchdown of 1989. Doug Williams' team leads it 10. Washington leads it 10 0, 445 to go in the first half. Philadelphia's offense hasn't gotten on track thus far in the ballgame. Matter of fact, 31 yards rushing and 14 passing, all they have done thus far. And the Redskins jump out to a 10 0 edge as Biner scores on third and goal from the one. But the key play, fourth and one. And Joe Gibbs said, we'll do it. And they ran a play action pass. Doug Williams found Jimmy Johnson to the nine yard line. Low Miller's kick. Henry Williams picks this one up on two hops. And he's out to the 23 yard line. Coming up next on CBS, game two of our doubleheader. All of you who are watching this will have a great interest in the Giants and the Rams game. Others of you will see Atlanta at San Francisco. And some of you will watch. Dallas facing Phoenix. That's all coming up next. A doubleheader on CBS Sports. And another reminder to those of you who are watching the New Orleans New England game that all the power to our remote truck in New England is out. And they are obviously working on that. It's 28 0. New Orleans leads that game, but as soon as power is restored, we'll send you back. There. First down and 10 here. Randall Cunningham will throw on first down. Marshall coming in the blitz. Sack. And now the booze will resound once more. Dexter Manley got there. The Redskins against the Eagles, and when they play Randall Cunningham, they say the thing we have to do is get in our rush lanes and stay there. We can't use a lot of moves. We can't do a lot of stunts because we take ourselves out of our lanes. He sees them, runs in them, and gets the yardage downfield running. What we have to do is put pressure on him, but we have to stay in our lanes. They hate that because they can't do a lot of fancy stuff rushing him. The second sack of Cunningham today. Four man rush this time. Cunningham across the middle of Jimmy Giles, the tight end. And a conservative call that uh, again arouses the restlessness of the fans here. Philadelphia Eagle bench Clyde Simmons, Wes Hopkins, Eric Everett, Jerome Brown chatting about uh, what has gone wrong thus far. Cunningham third down and nine from the 25 stunts by the defensive line Cunningham deep right side for Carson drops the ball just joined the team Carlos Carson picked up on waivers from the Kansas City Chiefs One of the things that Carlos Carson does bring to this team, the Eagle team, is his ability to get loose and make the great catches. He has always been a receiver who has always been able to catch the ball and to make it and go 80 and 90 yards. He does it all the time. That time, a great throw by Cunningham. Carlos Carson just dropped it. Carson could have become an overnight hero in Philadelphia with that grab because it would have gone for a touchdown beyond Martin Mayhew's grasp. But now John Pilchick comes on. Nice punt. Fair catch. Joe Howard back at the 17 yard line. That's a 56 yard punt for Telchik and nothing on the return. Carlos Carson. Well, the Eagles under pressure today. Two sacks, three hurries, three knocked down, and four drop passes, including that last one. And now Washington with a 10 0 lead, 3.20 to go, first half. Williams, five of nine for 70 yards. That's why he threw 52 times last Sunday night against the Cowboys. And off Morris at the 20 yard line. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a player of the game from each team. We'll be candidates for the National Miller Lite Player of the Week honors. Jamie Morris is certainly earning early consideration. There's Mark Rippon, who was replaced last week as the starting quarterback. Mark uh, had the misfortune of having all those fumble problems with sacks. He'd been sacked 12 times this year and fumbled 11 of the 12 times. But Doug Williams said he and Mark Rippon have a terrific relationship. Unlike, as uh, Doug said, I had with that other guy who was the quarterback there last year, Jay Schroeder. Second down and nine. Art Monk. 
near the 28 yard line. Seth Joyner with the tackle. Monk is chasing Ozzie Newsom and Raymond Berry on the all time list. Came in with 624 catches today, and he's on his way to another 1,000 yard season. All three of these receivers, Monk, Clark, and Sanders, all probably will go over 1,000 yards. Monk, as you look at his stats, said that when he first came into the league, it was speed that you needed as a wide receiver, but now, as after playing for many years, I realize now it's it's just how smart you are, how you can read the defenses, how you can find how to get open. That's important, not the speed. Sure, great to have it, but at the same time, the older you get, the smarter you get as a receiver. Doug Williams back surgery after a treadmill accident. He's wearing a flak jacket in reverse down in his lower back. And look at the uh, hit he took on the last play. Well, he said last week after the first hit, he realized he was going to be all right. He slips, actually, and, and falls down. And any time you have a back injury, notice the flag jacket. You can see the outline of it through the jersey. But you have a back injury, you got to wonder, you know, if I hit the ground, what's going to give? And he said after the first hit last week, hey, I'm all right. I'm all right. Third down and less than a yard. Started his NFL career at Tampa Bay, where his, his tight end was Jimmy Giles. They have remained the best of friends. Jimmy starting today as a tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles. Matter of fact, they went to dinner last night. Doug said, Jimmy pays for this one. We're on his turf. The Redskins this year, only 13 of 23 on third and one plays. That's what they've got here. Morris, that's close. And from the uh, line judges mark, I think, I think he got it. That's one of those right foot, left foot jobs, Jerry. Really, that's a small back going underneath the pile. You would think a lot of times a small back would go over the pile. And if Riggs, once again, if Riggs was, a, was in the ball game, you would understand the pile would be moving. Mm -hmm. But the running that has been successful by the Redskins has been to the left side, not to the right side, but to the left side. Here's the stretch. Got it. First down. Just barely. Just now you so. can go into your two-minute offense. Now it's showtime. Now it's fun time. You know, you work these. You know they're gonna, you know, the Eagles should give the Redskins zones. They should drop off and try to keep everything underneath, not allow the big play. Man-to-man -man coverage allows the big play, but go into zones. Doug Williams said uh, yesterday that his timing with his receivers was definitely off last Sunday night. He thinks it's going to be much better today because he's had a couple of weeks to work with him now. Well, it makes a difference, believe me. 135 to go in the first half. Well, flags are down. Jerome Brown makes the tackle out to the 34. That hit Ray Brown right at the ankle. Ray Brown on Reggie White, and the flag landed right on his foot. Holding number 67 in the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That's why it hit him on the foot. <laughs> he got up and looked down and saw that yellow flag, and you had to know that it was against him. But going back to that call, you know, the game of football is just a game of outguessing one another. and. There's the play. There's Smith, and there's the pull. Good job of pulling by Ray Brown. If you're going to go ahead and, and uh, hold a guy, do a good job of it, and I guarantee you did a fine job. Reggie, who has been complaining in recent weeks about being held, said, uh, I think I'm going to be quiet because he thinks there's been a, a reverse reaction. They're getting more calls made against his team now as a result of his complaint. And there's the handoff to Morris as the Redskins go conservative. And apparently will be content to try and sit on a 10-0 lead, but the Eagles will use the timeout now. I believe this will be Philadelphia's. There is a player down as well. That's Andre, Andre Waters. Waters, he's up, and time has been called. And the Eagles do use one of their three timeouts. Doug Williams comes back on. There was some conjecture, Terry, he might not come back and play after the back surgery, but Doug said that uh, two days after he had the surgery, he knew he would be able to come back through rehabilitation and hard work. Second down and 20. Tice 
goes to the left side. Morris, Byron Evans from behind makes the initial contact and then gets some help. And Reggie White signals timeout again for Philadelphia. They'll use their second. Well, it's obvious that that Joe Gibbs was hoping that he could establish some type of running and running game and and kill the clock. He really wasn't trying to score, or even get into field goal position, especially after the the holding penalty on Ray Brown. Ray Brown holding Reggie White. As we said, there's been a lot of complaining. <laughs> 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 oh boy, isn't that supposed to be who? Who and who? Holding whom? whom? I'm a college grad. I, whom? I know that. Whom? That's right. There's Reggie. Did a lot of complaining, and it's a known fact that if you complain a lot about the referees, that it, it's only natural that you know these guys are human beings, and it might bring a few more flags your way. And the best thing to do is just go about your business and let your coaches do your hollering, and then even that can get carried away. We've got 107 to go before halftime and coming up at the half Brandon Irv with all the scores highlights and latest information and the story of how the red hot Giants kept the heat on this week to get Ram tough. We know how they did it. They stayed west. Of course the Eagles stayed west last week. Yeah. They played in Denver and then they went out to San Diego and there was some criticism locally here in Philadelphia that they should have come back and then gone out. And I'm a player. I'm glad I'm in the. California absolutely as if the sun hits oh boy Williams gets knocked down right at the snap how many times have we seen that this year we did the 49er game earlier and in that same location Joe Montana had his pulling guard step on his feet notice Williams left foot I got to believe it's yep. his, oh it's his right foot Mark it's Slareth right, got it yeah and how many times do you see that where a quarterback has a wide base like that and doesn't get his feet in underneath him quick enough? Take a look at it on the Telestrator. Notice the wide base, number one, but notice this foot. And then watch the, the left foot of the right guard, Schlereff. There he's pulling inside, and then Doug doesn't get his right foot back quick enough, and then the guard steps on him and knocks him down. In this same arena, Back in week three, we saw Bruce Colley step on Joe Montana's foot for a safety. So Mark Schlereth, the young man from Anchorage. We keep circling him up for the fight, and we're circling him up for that. That's not his fault. That's the quarterback's fault. He's done a heck of a job in the first half of, of doing a, a good job on Reggie White, and he's done a good job running. Henry Gizmo Williams waits near the 45. The Eagles killed the clock with their final timeout, but they've got 63 seconds remaining in the first half. Mojinko. Ooh. Yeah. Williams, fair catch at the 46. They're in a booing mood in Philadelphia. <laughs> they booed Williams for the fair catch. Well, that was a smart move by Gizmo Williams, and he did the right thing. He didn't want to take a chance and cause a fumble, just grab it and turn it over to Cunningham and let him go. Coming up next Saturday, one of the classic matchups, top-ranked Notre Dame against 13th-ranked Penn State, 2.30 Eastern time on CBS. Oh, Ricky Waiters. Waters. Waters, that's what I said, Ricky Waters. 97-yard all-time school record punt return. I knew how to, I know how to say these things. Against SNU yesterday. Right. Here's Cunningham, Robert Drummond, who was a wide receiver in his first year at Syracuse. And was drafted in the third round because he could catch the ball so well. And quickly, Cunningham kills the clock with 41 seconds to go. Nice two-play sequence. Good play by Cunningham. It, it's amazing certain players or certain offenses thrive, thrive best when they're under adverse conditions. And certainly Cunningham in the first half in his offense have not played well, and the fans have let him know that. But once you corner him, once you corner Cunningham, once you bite at him and slap at him and knock him down, it seems then that he wakes up, and that's when he becomes dangerous. 10-0, Redskins lead it. Eagles are out of timeouts. Three-man rush by Washington. Cunningham, Drummond, hit by Monty Coleman after he makes the catch. Now you don't kill the clock. And time has been signaled by one of the officials. Yeah, you have two plays called now. You don't kill the clock here. If you get a first down here, then you kill the clock. Cunningham goes back, and the ball 
Oh, what a what a mix-up. Cunningham dropped back in the shotgun, and David Alexander centered didn't the ball it. and didn't know that Cunningham was not behind him. He, now you got to hurry up offense. Now you're going in for the field goal. David Alexander did not know Cunningham was not under him. I've never seen that in my entire career as a player. Total confusion now as Steve DeLine hurries on. And of course, of course, kicks it through as time expires. 49 yards for the man who is in his second game with the Philadelphia Eagles. In the midst of all that chaos, Steve DeLine comes through. A young man who was a rancher a week ago in Rand, Colorado. 22 miles northwest of Steve. Randall Cunningham and the Eagle offense get it for the first time in this half, trailing 10 to 3. They've got the ball at their own 18. The official explanation for the ejection of Ernest Biner is that he was ejected for bumping into the back judge, Dean Look. So he was not ejected for excessive profanity. Instead, it was for the physical contact. Cunningham, 5 of 13 for 49 yards. And he's been sacked twice, fumbled twice. Chris Carter starts in motion. They'll run it on first down. Tony, the one. Daryl Grant, one of the defensive linemen, and Charles Mann. Those defensive linemen have been making a lot of tackles today. Well, you can notice that 18% earlier in the season, and now the defensive linemen of the Redskins, 50% of the tackles today have been done by them. And when you cannot penetrate the line, man, you can't run a lick. That makes it easy for the secondary, and it makes it easy for the linebackers. Second down and nine. Cunningham, Tony, nice move. And then Marshall is up on top as Tony is tackled by Daryl Grant. And a player is down at the 10-yard line. It's Randall Cunningham. And his backup, Matt Cavanaugh, has been in for just one offensive play this year. And that was an interception in Denver two weeks ago. Unnecessary roughness, roughing the passer, number 77, headbutt. 15-yard penalty, first down. Daryl Grant with the headbutt. Well, this is a delayed, this 25, Tony, will come up inside, fake the block, and now he will move out in the pass route. Cunningham sets up, nice little easy touch pass, nice job. Now that ball is gone, and then, man, look at Grant from the outside, spears him right in the back. I'll tell you what else, it wasn't Daryl Grant, it was Charles Mann, it was number 71. It was 71, the official call the wrong number. Charles Mann coming from the left side. Almost positive of that, that it was... Well, if it come in, it's from the outside, it would have to be Mann. Where Mann is the end, Grant is a tackle. Grant would have come up from the inside. Take a look at it again, see if it's not Charles Mann. Let me show you, let me... There's man getting by Heller. There he is. Now this is man coming from the outside. There you go. Now there's a pass and the spear. You know, a lot of times you see something like that. There's even a possibility that Charles Mann could be kicked out of the game. You cannot use your head as a weapon. You can't use it like that. You can't even touch a quarterback, let alone spear him in the middle of the back long after the pass has left his hand. Matt Cavanaugh continues to warm up, the 12-year man. And Randall Cunningham now hears the cheers as he trots to the sideline. He looks over in the direction of the Redskin bench, and he's trying to find Charles Mann. Well, maybe that's what it takes to wake up this offensive line. Maybe it takes a, a shot in the back, a, a, if you will, a cheap shot to a, a quarterback. Fred Stokes has replaced Charles Mann. There was no word on an ejection. Mann is standing on the sideline. Now Manley comes over to the left side and lines up. And Kavanaugh is in for at least this play. First and ten, Philadelphia. Myers. Todd Bowles with the 
with the tackle. And Cunningham comes back. So does Charles Mann. Second down, three. Fires again. First down, Philadelphia. Philadelphia needs this. They're six and three. They trail the Giants by two. They are at New York the first weekend in December. They've got Minnesota here next week. And they trail the Redskins. They have their hands full right now. First down at the 50. Anthony Tony. And again, that defensive line starts to running play. This is, uh, Terry, a Philadelphia team that has run with improving success the last five weeks. They've really gotten it together on the ground. Well, one of the reasons that Ryan and Ted Plum went to a running attack was because the offense, even when it was thrown for 400 yards, these coaches pointed out to us that they had been losing. They had only won. The Eagles had only won one game out of three in which Cunningham threw for over 400 yards and less than 50% of the time when he threw over 300 and too many turnovers and they felt they had to establish the running game. They'll pass now. Maybe. Plank is down. Cunningham, double coverage in the end zone. Carter can't hang on. There's a flag back at the 33. Holding Philadelphia. Well, this is the one thing that Washington doesn't want to allow happen. In the last meeting, Charles Mann said, we have to keep Cunningham in the pocket. He's not a great quarterback out of the pocket. We can't allow him outside. Holding number 79 of the offense. The penalty is declined. Third down. That's Mike Shad, the left guard. Well, we talked a lot about this Redskin offensive line and all the young men who are in there. The Eagle offensive line, by and large, has stayed together as a unit. Since Ron Solt came back from that suspension for uh, the illegal use of steroids. Now Ken Reeves has replaced Matt Darwin but that is not because of injury that is simply that that's almost an interchangeable place over at left tackle. It's Reeves Shad Alexander Solt and Heller along with Jimmy Giles shotgun on third down. Blitz corner blitz Walton nails absolutely obliterates Cunningham. Alvin Walton coming off the corner. And the pass is incomplete. Cunningham had time, though, Vern. He had his man open, and the ball was underthrown. Even though Walton got to Cunningham, he had time to set up and throw the ball. Looking left, no problem there. There's the delivery. Now, great quarterbacks anticipate being hit. They have a feel for it. Cunningham knew he was going to hit and that get hit and that may have uh, contributed to the fact that he pulled the string and tried to get rid of this ball without striding. Walton comes through on Telchik. Telchik sends it high. And it goes into the end zone. It'll come back to the 20. Sammy Lilly down there but he couldn't get to the football. It'll be at the 20 when the Redskins Go on offense again. Veteran Stadium, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, second meeting this year between the Washington Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles. Washington leads it by seven, 10 to three. Randall Cunningham, a little exasperated right now, six of 16 for 57 yards, and he's taken a beating. His offensive line has been allowing some escapes. First and ten in Washington. Doug Williams with one running back behind him. That is Jamie Morris. Again, Ernest Biner is out. Ejected. There's Seth Joyner, who is one of about a quartet. I think there are four Eagle defenders who are wearing those black shoes. And uh, they are donned. They donned them today. Now, he doesn't have the high tops on. Reggie White does. But uh, that is a violation of the uniform policy of the league. So 
Five hundred bucks, isn't it? Or Two fifty. It's an escalate. It's an escalating fine, I believe. Is it? Well, you ought to know. Yeah. L.C. Greenwood used to violate it yeah. every week. You do it next week. I think it costs you a little bit more. If they lose today, they won't do it next week. Second down and seven. Morris again. Cool. Barry. And it's Joyner again, this time with Jerome Brown in there, number 99. Jerome Brown is a load. He's one of the best tackles. Well, obviously, this guy has played defensive tackle as well as anyone we've seen this year. And there was some question about him in up and down injuries in early part of his career. But coming on now and playing, as his own coach would say, all pro type defensive tackle. But if you can't move the tackles out on the inside, you can't run inside. Third and seven. Ten to three, Washington. Art Monk starts in motion, followed by Isaiah Jenkins. Williams has to get rid of it early with pressure. Coming from Al Harris on the blitz, number 95. Buddy Ryan. Washington's Ralph Mozienko will punt it away to Henry Williams. Williams with a nine yard return average on punts this year. At the 28. At the 44. 17 yards on the return. And this sputtering Eagle offense has the ball yet one more time, trailing by seven. Begins by seven midway through the third quarter, and thus far, only 91 yards of total offense. They have 45 yards rushing, 46 passing. Randall Cunningham out for one play. With an injury, back in there. First and 10, Philadelphia at their own 45. Right side, Juan Johnson. That's only his seventh catch this year, playing in the spot normally occupied by the All-Pro Mike Quick. That's a gain of 16. Nice time to throw the football. That time, Byers out in the flat, brought the corner up, and then Johnson went in behind the corner, and Randall Cunningham, with a strong throw, drilled it between the corner and the safety before the safety actually could get over and cover Ron Johnson. Gain of 16, first down at the 44. 39, beg your pardon. Myers in motion. Three step drop, Jimmy Giles, third catch today. That's another Philadelphia first down. As the 13 year vet makes his third catch of the afternoon. The key to this is once Giles, 83, gets to the outside, he turns his head around, and the ball is zipped in there before the linebacker, Minuski, and the safety bowls can get there. The key, once again, was Giles' release. He was able to get off the line of scrimmage. Cunningham saw immediately once Giles cleared the linebacker, he drilled the football in there. 13 years in the league, and he's missed only two games all together because of injury. Twice in 13 years. First and ten, Cunningham, short drop again. Giles again. The young quarterback and the old consummate professional tight end. Yeah, what you have to understand is just that. Cunningham is a young quarterback. Now the outside release and the outside route. Now what is what? Well, he doesn't know what to do. Is he going inside? Is he going outside? But now Ted Plum, the offensive coordinator for the Eagles, has to sense that Cunningham's confidence is coming back. It's important now that he feed him the plays that will make him great. He can do it, but Plum has to sense it. Second and five. Carter looks in to get the signal. Draw play, Byers. Now see, I, I know running is good, but what I just got through saying is important. When you feel a quarterback's confidence surging, don't run the football. If I know that I'm on, I'll throw it 10 times in a row. If I know I'm off, I'll run it until I get my confidence back. Cunningham has thrown three short passes that got him moving down the field. Don't stop him. Let him continue to throw the football. Don't hamper him now. Keep feeding him the pass. Third down and three. Three. 
Play fake. Cunningham intercepted. Kurt Gavea gets his first of the year as Randall Cunningham tried to submarine the ball. Right spot, right time. Cravea just mirrored Cunningham. Cunningham this time outside. No one covered. Everybody's covered. Throw it away. Just throw it away. If there's one problem a young quarterback has after having made a lot of great plays is the fact that he thinks he can continue to make big plays. Don't force the issue. Just throw it out of bounds. That's the first interception of the year for Kurt Gavea. First down, Washington. They hang on to a 10-3 lead. Jamie Morris out to the 15-yard line. Flag is down. Tackle made by Mike Pitts, number 74. Illegal motion, number 83 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Buddy Ryan's got to be a little exasperated. So also does Jeff Fisher, the defensive coordinator you saw by his side. Jeff Fisher said he thought they could get defensive pressure from that front line today. And thus far, they haven't had a lot. Well, one thing, Doug Williams has not had to throw in the football to win the football game. He's been able to set up and get rid of the football quickly. And when you do that, you don't allow the defensive line enough, chance, enough time to get to you. Williams will throw it on first down. Chased by Reggie White. Pass is caught by Ricky Sanders out to the 21. One thing I think the fans are seeing today is that if I had to line Cunningham up on the goal line and line Rand Randall Cunningham up, I don't know which one of those could throw the football the feathers, but both of them can throw it at least 50 yards on a frozen rope. Two of the strongest arms you I have ever seen. This guy, Williams, when he was at Tampa, rolled out one time against the Cowboys, threw it 78 yards. I counted them. 78 yards on the move. Great I know arm. You are among the most modest of men, but I, I'm, I must ask you how far you could throw it. Well, Vern, I can't answer that. That's this is not the time for that. From the 22, <laughs> 91 or two, I guess. What I think. Here it's, <laughs> here it's you did hear me, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I'm here to be your straight man. At the 26, the tackle made by Wes Hopkins. Detroit rolls over Green Bay. That's a surprise. Look at this. Wow. Chicago leading Pittsburgh. Well, Mike might not retire after all. <laughs> Denver, they've always struggled in Kansas City, but they lead today in Buffalo with a big lead over Indianapolis. Miami and the Jets having a good one, and New England has now scored 10 to cut that margin in their game against New Orleans. First and 10, Washington. They lead a 10 to 3. Four and a half to go. Third quarter. Morris. More and more pressure, I think, is going to come on, is going to be placed on Doug Williams. It's just so hard. I know what Joe Gibbs wants to get done here. He wants to establish the run and kill the clock and move it on down, but it's going to take a lot of play action, I think, by Williams and getting rid of the football to his fleet receivers. I just, I just don't know that with the young offensive line that they can continuously just pound the football. They're going to have to mix it a little bit more with the young offensive line than he would have if he'd had the entire Hogs back in there. Clyde Simmons, number 96. Williams has been sacked twice today. He's 9 of 15 for 109. Second down and nine. 10 to 3. Redskins lead at 340 to go. Don't play Morris. And it's tough. Jerome Brown. See these tackles for the Eagles. When I say two gap, what I'm talking about is the tackles of the Eagles are taught to engage the guard or the center in front of them and then get their hands on them and then peek inside over their left shoulder, peek inside over their right shoulder. In other words, they have two gaps that they have to protect. And it's hard to run draws on tackles that sit there and play two gaps. And that's why that play didn't work. Exactly. Third and seven. Sanders is in motion, number 83. Simmons is coming. Williams finds Jamie Morris. And that's enough for a first down. 
big third down conversion. That's good football. One thing that these backs that the Redskins have in there, Morris and Biner, is not only are they real, they're speed burners, they're slashing type runners, but they're excellent out of the backfield. And so therefore, you don't see a substitution. You say, whoops, here comes Morris. He's the guy they like to throw to. They've been in there the whole game, so the pass to the backs is always there. First and 10, Washington, 2.24 to go, third quarter. We haven't seen, sorry, Vern, we haven't seen the deep ball, the deep threat yet. Interesting, because that's what Doug Williams did all last week. And look at here on first down. He looks for Gary Clark, and there is Gary Clark. First down at the 44. Semi-deep. Yeah. I love that route. I love it. If I ever wrote a book and they asked me to fill it up with your favorite routes, every page would be filled with the post end. The I, deep 20-yard end cut, how do you cover it? If you play man coverage, you're running away from it. If you play linebackers underneath it, you throw between them or over them. No way they can stop it. I'm trying to envision the market you might have for a book on you wouldn't. great routes. There would be no market. Okay. <laughs> First down and 10, Redskins. At the Philadelphia 44, Terry Orr, the motion man. Morris, Mike Golick, who's in the defensive line now for Philadelphia, number 90, was up over the top to help make the tackle. Interesting place to run the football. Every time Reggie White has lined up over the center, the running has been outside to run away from him. That time, White lined up as his normal defensive end position, and what did the Redskins do? They ran, they ran right outside him. right at him. Second down and nine. This Redskin offense, despite the the problems they've had with people injuries out, they're still the number one offense in the National Football League. 400 yards average per game. Flag is down. The pass is incomplete. Well, there's our guy, Ray Brown. This going to be number three for the day? I don't, I don't know. I saw the flag. Let's see if it's number 67. Holding offense, number 67, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Ray Brown, who replaced Joe Jacoby back in the first quarter. Jacoby out with a dislocated left kneecap. That injury occurred on the successful field goal from Low Miller. That's okay. Ray Brown, I know any, it's always heard that, that announcers always put their cameras on us and only say things about us when we hold, but as a former quarterback, you hold them, bite them, kick them, stab them. I don't care what you do. Don't let them touch me. That's okay. Doug will make up for it. That's how. That's the attitude you take. That's the one I always had. Hold them. I don't care. Second down and 19. Final minute, third quarter. Joe Gibbs said, we just need a win. I don't care how we get it. We just need a win. Buddy Ryan said, we've got to have a win if we're going to win the division. It'll be third and 19 after the incompleted pass. Now, yeah, Buddy Ryan said this is a playoff game. We have to approach it like a playoff game. And if this is where they're approaching a playoff game, then they're going to be in a lot. They're going to they're not going to be in the in the championship race very long because it's a very emotionless type offensive and defensive unit today. Ricky Sanders comes in. Joe Gibbs said that they went back to basics. Now you hear that a lot, Terry. Yeah. But this week they did go back to, to more industrious work habits. They worked in pads, for example, on Friday. Which is unusual. Also, they got on the board and pointed out the tendencies they'd had on third down and short and all that stuff, which is something they'd gotten away from doing. Third down and 19. Williams loads and fires. Sammy Lilly should have had it. He mistimed his leap. He drew a beat on the ball and should have had it. That's right, right through him. Just a footnote, Joe Gibbs told us, we're not thinking playoffs, we're thinking survival. We just want to win. But interestingly enough, a year ago, the Philadelphia Eagles were four and five after nine games, and they went on a winning streak. They won six of their last seven and got in the playoffs as the champions of the division. Mozienko's punt into the end zone. So the Philadelphia offense comes back on the field. They trail 10 to 3.
It was 10-3 Washington at halftime. It's still 10-3 Redskins leading as they try and even their season record at 5-5. Five and five. The Eagles try and go to 7-3 and three for the year. Buddy Ryan with Ted Plum to his right, his offensive coordinator. First down and 10, Philadelphia. They've not had much success on offense today. Cunningham, quick drop. Fires it out to Carter. And they're out to the 28. Final 15 seconds of the third quarter. A.J. Johnson makes the tackle. Daryl Green, of course, is uh, on the injured reserve list. And Barry Wilburn out on the non-football illness list. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. The Washington Redskins 10. The Dwight and his Philadelphia teammates trailing the Washington Redskins 10 to 3. The offensive unit of the Eagles on the field with a second down and two from their own 28. Audible now by Randall Cunningham. Chris Carter looks out to make sure they know the audible. There's the pass. Caught. Nice play. Keith Byers, who is lined up out on the right-hand side, and the Eagles have gone to the pass, Terry. Remember, go back to the, the point that was made by Ted Plum to us. They wanted to change up their mixtures of runs and passes, and they certainly have done that today as they've gone more to the pass than they have the run. One of the reasons you'll see you'll see Byers flanked out by himself is because of strong safety Walton as you look at the percentages and how they have changed, but Walton will have to cover Byers man for man, and Ted Plum says that's a mismatch. On first down, Cunningham chased by Manley. Now chased by Mann. Okay, that's smart there. That's that's smart football. The last time Randall Cunningham scrambled, he threw. He tried to make something happen when there was nothing there, and Kirk Cavea intercepted. This time he got outside. He looked downfield. Nothing there. He just throw it away or get out of bounds. From the 39, second down. You know a play that we could look for. A lot of times when you can't move your offense normally, you try to have a gadget pass, something that's different, something that's not normally what you use. And I would look for a gadget pass sometimes today to maybe wake up the Eagle offense. Here's Randall Cunningham to Byers again, and Wilbur Marshall forces him out of bounds at the 45. Where in the field is the best place to throw a gadget pass? You normally want to use it like around the 40, their 40 yard line. Going in. Going in. The Eagles sometimes will use it outside the 50 and negative yard in their own in their own side of the field. So it's it varies with teams. But most of the time anywhere from the 30 to 40 going in is a good time to change it up and show something different. It'll be third down and four and Randall Cunningham will operate out of the shotgun. Chris Carter starts in motion. Chris Carter gets the ball. And works for the yardage. He's got a first down. Forced out of bounds by Brian Davis, number 34. And that works for a first down. Well, just file this one away. If we're going to see a gadget pass by the Philadelphia Eagles, it might be thrown by the man who just caught that ball, Chris Carter. Chris Carter can throw it. And Dexter Manley is limping. Manley will leave. Well, that's a guy you don't want to see leave your football team, especially if Cunningham starts cranking it up. You're going to need Manley in there to rush the passer. At the 50, Cunningham back. Stokes is in. Pass is overthrown. Too high, intended for Ron Johnson. You know, the last time these two teams met, between the tight end and the running back, Byers, Keith Jackson caught 10 passes and Byers caught 12. That's 22 completions between the two of them. Byers caught all his passes coming out of the backfield and going into the flat. And Jackson caught all his passes going down and hooking over the middle and sliding out. So those are two things we haven't seen, although we are now seeing Byers out of the backfield into the flat. Second and 10. Blitz incomplete off the hands of Ron Johnson. 
That's a shut ahead. Last time we heard, the Packers were losing. Let's go back to New York and check in with Brent. Well, Vern, they're still losing, but the Pack is coming back. Terrific second half team. Don Mikowski with a touchdown pass. Interception. They go in again. So 14 quick points, and now it's 24 to 17. Back to Vern and Terry. All right, Brent, that truly is amazing what they've done in the second half this year. That is the seventh drop now by the Philadelphia wide receivers, and it's a third and 10 from the 49. back in Cunningham there's a flag down Cunningham may be running for naught and Manley is celebrating back up field a gain of 16 and a first down wiped out holding holding number 72 the offense 10 yard penalty repeat third down that's the center David Alexander and it wipes out a 16 yard gain and a first down at the 34 yard line yeah just when the Eagles get something going then they have had the penalties and the mistakes actually that have cost the drop passes that you alluded to earlier Vernon a third down now and whew, looking at what 20 Third and 20, and they're two for nine on third down conversions today. Third and 20 is hard to make up, but if you're going to do it, it's over the middle. Four man rush by the Redskins. Cunningham finds fires. That will not be enough. It'll be fourth down at the 47 yard line. Good job by Cunningham not to force the issue. That's a case where it would have been very easy for him to stay in there, struggle, fight, and try to rush and force that football to get the first down. He stayed in there, he hung in there, and then he finally said, I'm going to take what I can get, put my, give my kicker a little better field position. Maybe Byers catches it, gets the first down, maybe not, but I'm not going to force the turnover. As you can see, John Telchik has done a good job of keeping it away from Joe Howard today. This time straight up and straight down. That is not a good punt. That is not what Telchik had in mind at all. 23 yard punt. Redskins with a fair catch have it at their own. Last two weeks the Redskins have rushed for a total of 71 yards. Jamie Morris almost has reached that number already. Total yards the Redskins 206 and Philadelphia 171. Ernest Beiner ejected. Redskins lead at 10 to 3 now early in the fourth quarter Terry. Their offensive line with all those young kids in there has done very well and their defensive line has played well as well. Offensive line I think has done extremely well and now in the second half it's important for Doug to mix it up and take a little pressure off of them. They can't continue just to make the, you know get the big holes. Defensive line of the Redskins outstanding today and stopping the run and forcing Cunningham to get outside and try to force the ball downfield. Williams hands it off to Jamie Morris. He comes right on first down and gets to the 25. Bostic gets up limping. Boy, that's all they need is to lose Joe Bostic. Oh, they can't afford to lose anyone. Get if they lose Bostic, then they got to bring Harbor, and then they have then no there are one. No backups. No one. If you joined us late, Lachey didn't start today because of an injury. Mark May, of course, is on injured reserve for the year. Russ Grimm is suited up, but should not play because he's hurt. And Joe Jacoby went out in the first half with an injury. Jeff Bostic is the only starting veteran who is still in there. Don Warren is not playing today either. Second down and eight. Ten to three with 11.50 to go. Morris to the 31-yard line. That's short of the first down. It'll be third and about one. Doesn't take much of a crack. If you have a big back and a small crack, it's very hard to bounce off and get yards. But if you have a smaller back, it doesn't take quite as big a, 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 a space or crack in the defensive line. And Morris, being smaller than Riggs, is able to get in there, scoot, find the little seam, and then hustle out and almost got the first down. Interesting how Gibbs has let this offense kind of just work itself in. He hasn't forced this offense. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't forced these kids to do something they're not capable of doing. Been very, very, if you will, vanilla. Third and a long one. Ricky Sanders dancing around the backfield. Williams, that pass is complete to the 38-yard line. 
Ricky Sanders came out of the backfield to make the grab. And then another good example of smart coaching by Gibbs and the fact that he didn't force a lot of pressure on the offensive line of the Redskins. A short pass route by by a, a, a Ricky Sanders coming out of the back out of the backfield out of the slot actually. Williams not a very long route just stopped back three three steps and boom got rid of the football. No pressure on your line that way. It's good calling. Ten and a half to go. It's ten to three. Washington. Terry Orr starts in motion. Now he and Mike Tice are strong to the right. Morris gets under Jerome Brown and picks up a yard or two. Brett Hager makes the tackle number 54. Doug Williams saw the blitz was coming by the Eagles, but once again, the offense that he has in there, you, you know, you're restricted, Vern. You can't do a lot of the explosive things that you'd like to do because you can't put that kind of pressure, once again, on this young offensive line. The piglets, the piglets <laughs> that, you, that you've that called them. They're still big. They're just baby yeah, piglets. they're young. Yeah, young pigs. Second and nine. Ten to three, 940. Clock winding down. Draw play. Reggie White makes the tackle of Jamie Morris at the 43. And that will make it third and about six. Coming up next, game two of our doubleheader. The NFC East leading Giants take on the slumping Rams. Atlanta battles Joe Montana and the 49ers or Dallas via Phoenix. All coming up next on CBS. The Giants, of course, with uh, an interest in this one. Because if the Redskins should win this game and the Giants win, they'd open up a three-game lead with six to play. Third and five, 8.54 to go. Sanders again. Williams across the middle, caught Sanders. Same pattern? Same pattern this time. It's a read pattern by Sanders. Sammy Little stayed to the outside. Sanders saw this, so he said, wind his hook. I'll come and one, run away from him. I'll go to the inside. There's no one there. Williams read it. Sanders read it. Good job by the quarterback and the receiver. Williams now 13 of 21. Ricky Sanders has caught five passes for 48 yards. He leads all receivers for the Redskins. And a first down at the 48-yard line. And more time on the clock. 8-10 to go in the ball game. Morris, right side. Down to the 45-yard line. As your counter tray against it. This time the Redskins try to run it to the right. Just haven't had the success today with the counter tray with with this young group in there even though McKenzie was leading and has played has started for the Redskins and it's in a situation now for Buddy Ryan who is a great defensive coach make no mistake about it now the chance is do you gamble do you blitz if you blitz will Williams pick it up will they go deep on us or do we stay in these little zones and support and try to stop the run eight play of the drive on second and seven Morris starts by Seth Joyner and moves it all the way down to the 41 yard line. We said it earlier that for this team to run with these backs, the real success, I believe, is going to be wide. Riggs is in there, it's between the tackles, and the success today, I believe, that Morris has had has been to the outside. That's he gets out wide with great speed and good cutback ability he has. He really puts the pressure on the linebackers in the corners as opposed to running inside, putting it on the middle linebacker and the tackles. Offensive and defensive changes made now by the respective teams. Evans and Harris come out. And that's Byron Evans. Looks like he's not uh, real pleased to be coming out of the lineup. Third and short. Always short routes. Always short routes. Sanders goes left. Williams heaves it left. Caught. Ricky Sanders, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Whenever you need three yards, you never run a 15-yard pattern. You always run short routes. Sanders just breaks out in the flats, man coverage. He gets outside, man, he's there. Good job. But wipe it out, bring it back. Aha! Now you say to me, Terry, long route, long, long yardage, long routes? I'll answer it. Terry, long yardage, long routes? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's your question. Yeah. <laughs> Good question, Vern. I thought it was. <laughs> Illegal motion. Number 83 of the offense started in motion before the line was set. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's Ricky right. Sanders who started up. Yeah, field. you go back to what we've been saying all along in the second half. Do you, it, if you throw a long route, it puts more pressure on your offensive line, which is very young, and therefore, I, you don't know if you want to do it. You might get sacked. So, there's another way to get a, a long route in, and that's to throw a short pass and let the back or their tight end or the receivers catch it and let them run for the long yardage. It's only third and eight. I would look for something like a slant or maybe even a simple little hook if you get man coverage. Redskins are 6 of 15 on third down today. They lead it by 7 with 7.13 to play. Blitz. Williams lets it go. Morris, first down. What a job by Doug Williams, who looks down in the face of Sammy Lilly and says, gotcha. It's unusual to see a veteran quarterback like Doug Williams get blitzed. Veteran quarterbacks know where blitzes are coming from and they know which side they're protected on. Williams knows that. He knew he had enough time to wait on his receiver to come open even though the safety blitz was on. Now the safety blitz, is, they've come after Williams twice. They failed both times. Now you have to say, fellas, are you going to do it again? Have I finally convinced you that you can't beat me blitzing me? I got to think that's the case. And again, they buy time on the clock. It's under the seven-minute mark now, 6.57 to go. Williams, 14 of 22. The difference in this ball game is a touchdown run by Ernest Biner in the first half, but it was set up on a fourth and one throw on play action from Doug Williams to his rookie tight end, Jimmy Johnson. That set up a first and goal at the nine. Play action on fourth down behind this very young offensive line. Sanders goes left. 6.33 to go in the ball game. Morris. Down at the 34-yard line. And they're getting uh, within Low Miller territory now for a field goal. This drive began back at the 23-yard line. I don't, I don't believe you'll see anything risky on behalf of the Redskins. The only thing that could possibly happen is if Williams is able to read safety blitz if the Eagles want to come after him, Vern, which is this is the perfect place that you would do it if you want to do it. He's Williams beat them twice on safety blitzes, but if this is the case, then Williams would have the audible to use against the safety blitz. Otherwise, I think you'll see the Redskins just try to run the football. Second down and seven. Blitz. Mike Pitts. Andre Waters. Notice, notice how this back is easing over. That's because this man is going to blitz. Everyone is locked in on a back. Doug Williams allowed just to stay with it. No problem. Notice Waters now comes up. The reason the safety cheats over is when Waters blitz, he has to, the weak safety has to pick up the man Waters would have been responsible for and cover him on a pass route. Tell you what else. They were right at the edge of Low Miller's range. That blitz may have forced them out of range, and now the uh, clock is winding down and timeout has been called by the Redskins. Doug Williams uses one of the three Redskin timeouts. 4.57 remaining in the ballgame. Randall Cunningham hopes he can get back with his team trailing only by seven. Doug Williams and the Redskins now have run off 11 plays and seven minutes and 40 seconds in this current drive to go 40 yards. And the, and the job that, that Williams has done, Vern, and especially in converting the third and short situations have been outstanding. Mike Tice has not caught a pass so far this year. Terry Orr has only caught one. They're the tight ends. That's Tice. Third and 10. Williams incomplete. Great pressure from a blitzing Byron Evans. Man, just circle the whole defense because this was an all-out blitz. Notice everyone 
Williams setting up. There's Evans, Seth Joyner, Al Harris. Every linebacker on the on these Eagles team was blitzing Doug Williams that time. Henry Gizmo Williams to return Ralph Mozienko's punt. Williams at the 10-yard line. Well, they did take them out of Low Miller's field goal possibility. And this will be a touchback. Philadelphia will get it back 80 yards away with four minutes and 44 seconds remaining in regulation time. Lead Randall Cunningham and his teammates on offense 80 yards away with 4.44 remaining in regulation time. They've not had much success on first downs today, Terry. 2.6 yards. Well, they've tried to run and tried to run, and, and once again, we point out to the defensive line of the Washington Redskins, boy, they have had a whale of a game to stopping the running attack of the Eagles. Out of the shotgun. Cunningham across the middle dropped. Jimmy Giles, Kurt Gavea got in there and may have gotten a hand on the ball. Now, I understand a great deal of what's going on. It's when you have, as young Cunningham has, his, his deep threat, Mike Quick, is gone. He's out. Then you look at Keith Jackson, all pro tight end. He's out. And then you bring in a young receiver, Carlos Carson, who has only practiced a couple of days. Man, it really makes it rough. Confidence-wise, you have to suffer a little bit with your passing. Second and ten. Left side. Gee. Right through the hands of Robert Drummond. It'll be third and ten. Can't throw it much better in the last two passes. You know, you just can't. You got to, you, you know, I think Buddy Ryan said it best. In games like this, our stars have to be stars. What he's saying is Randall's got to make the big plays. Drummond, a young star off of last week's game, 70 receiving, 70. He's got to make the big play. Giles has to make the big plays. Stars have to get up and play like stars in games like this. Third and ten. Nine drop passes today unofficially. Blitz. It'll be fourth down. Cunningham has now run four times today. And that will go as a sack, not a run. He hasn't picked up a yard running. He hasn't and had so three and out. Hasn't had any time. He threw two good passes. Both of them were, were dropped. Both of them would have, at least the second one would have made sure they had a first down. And then when he does need to go deep with the football, his offensive line hasn't been able to give him enough time. Or the secondary of the Redskins has just did a great job of covering. John Pilchik on the punt. Joe Howard with a fair catch at the 33-yard line. Four minutes and two seconds remaining. 42-yard punt. Saturday on CBS, college football action is the top-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame put their undefeated record on the line against Joe Paterno and the Penn State Nittany Lions. That's 2.30 Eastern time on CBS. All right, so what do they got? That 22-game winning streak? Right. Longest, I believe, in Irish history right. or That's whatever. True. And old Blair Thomas, a young running back, had that injury, came back this year and had 120-something yards last week. Back in the Heisman race. Two outstanders, Lou Holtz and Joe Paterno, and ought to be a whale of a game. Saturday, first down and 10. Jamie Morris, this is his 34th, 34th carry today. And he's closing in on the 100-yard day. He's got 89 now. I mean, if you looked at Jamie Morris, I mean, folks, this is not, this is not John Riggins. This is not Gerald Riggs. This, this. This man is not that big, but 34 carries and to still be hammering at it is amazing. And forget the yardage. I'm just impressed with the fact the guy's carried the ball 34 times. Well, believe it or not, of all the great running backs in Redskin history, Jamie Morris has the club record with 45 carries in a single game in 1988. Second down, seven. 318 to go. Morris shakes a tackle. That was Seth Joyner who missed the tackle, and Andre Waters and Morris. Well, there's, not, there's nothing unusual about Waters getting involved in something like yeah, that. Yeah, but that wasn't Waters' fault. One of the Waters' men behind him pushed Waters while he had his hands on Jamie Morris, and Morris obviously thought, naturally so, that that was Waters doing that, but that wasn't Waters' fault. He just, he's just getting blamed for it. Clock still running, 2.50 to go. Third down and six.
Isel Jenkins comes in. I was thinking about Jeff Fisher, the defensive coordinator, telling us when they lost, when the Eagles lost to Chicago, they missed 12 tackles in that game. In their next four games, when they won four in a row, they missed two, two, three, and two, respectively. And last week, when they lost to San Diego, they missed 10 tackles. You just saw him miss another one. Timeout has been called by the Redskins. And they stop the clock with 2.26 remaining in the ballgame. He's one of the world's most accomplished jazz trumpet players. When he feels like it, he'll tell you what's on his mind. Miles Davis tonight on 60 Minutes. That's followed by Murder, she wrote. Then on the CBS Sunday movie, The Return of Sam McCloud, starring Dennis Weaver. That's all coming up tonight on CBS. 2.26 to go in the ball game. A third down and six coming up. Waters, Eric Allen. Defensive unit heads back out. The Redskins have one timeout left. The Eagles do have all three of theirs. And Doug Williams thus far, 14 of 23 for 161 yards. Well, you can tell by the by the numbers that Williams has put up and the rushing attempts by Morris that the obvious game plan now was to come in and and run the football and hats off to the offensive lineman of the Redskins. They've done a heck of a job. Third and six. Stunts and a delayed blitz. And the pass deep left side and incomplete. Eagles will get another shot. It was intended for Gary Clark. Well, I, you have to think that Doug Williams is saying to himself, I don't have enough time to let Clark go this deep. It's putting a lot of pressure on my line, and I believe that he just really didn't trust him. He really didn't trust his line that time. He had plenty of time. He could have stood in there for another couple of seconds and really drilled the ball into, into Clark. Gizmo Williams back to return it. Only one today, but that was 417. Pressure coming. And Williams gets a fortunate bounce because he was trying to get out of the way. And the ball bounced backward and out of bounds at the 19. A 44-yard punt. Mojenko update you on other scores. Minnesota rolls on. They're here next week. Terry and I will be here for that game. Detroit and Green Bay, 24-20 is Magic and the Packers fight back. Chicago leads Pittsburgh 20 to nothing. And Kansas City has tied up Denver at 13 in the fourth quarter. Buffalo rolls over Indianapolis. Last time the Eagles had it, three and out. First down and 10, shotgun. Crossing route, Gizmo Williams. Lost a little yardage and picked up three after the 23 and a half. That will be the final play before the two minute warning. Last time the two teams played, the final was 42 to 37. Right now it's 10 to 3. See, teammates can hold on to a lead now, 10 to 3. Ray and his very young offensive teammates, that's Joe Bugle, prowling around in front. Had a couple of holding calls, but well, after all said and done, Ray Brown ought to be proud of himself. He's played a, he's played a doggone nice game, did a good job. Eagles have to cover that much. And they've got a second down and four. Out of the shotgun. Cunningham to Byers. Dropped it. Was it a catch? This one will be destined for replay, I have a feeling. Nope. No, nope. ruling it incomplete. Okay, incomplete pass. But slant route. Just for fun, let's go ahead and take okay, a look well, at it. Okay, we'll take a look at it. This is just a slant to Byers coming over the middle, or Gizmo. Byers. Byers inside, a little slant. Two feet. Nope. Ball's out. Incomplete. And then Williams is there to make sure, in case it was a fumble, that he had it. Guess what? A little review. Here's a scoop. They're looking at it, a replay. Man, how do you figure out? Let's look at this again, but how do you figure out what to do and go 80 yards? Isn't it amazing how you have to think and figure out where can we go? Where's the weakness going to be? We've seen Byers out in the flat now. The last two passes we've seen by, by Randall have been quick slants inside. And the reason you run slants is that the slant route, the quick in route, 
runs away from man coverage and it runs through zones. In other words, what I mean by that, if there's a linebacker in that area, a slant guy will run by that linebacker and he'll become he'll come open again. So it's a great route to run against both man and zones, and it's a dangerous route because once it's caught, man, it's going against the grain and it can get you Please a bundle. Please reset the 30-second clock to 12 seconds. 12 seconds on the 30-second clock. Well, they continue to look at the replay. Now, what they've got to find is conclusive evidence to overrule the decision. And they're going to have a tough time finding that, I think. Good throw. After further review, the play stands. It'll be third down. Okay, let's look. Left bang, foot, bang. left foot, right foot, ball. You can notice then that the ball does appear that it's coming loose, so Byers doesn't have possession. That's the ruling. Third down and four. Cunningham. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Another in route. Another deep in route. Now, what do you got in your bag of tricks for fourth and four? Man, you've tried it all. A route that, that the Eagles have is seam route where they literally will take both wide guys and run them out and both end guys and run them down and let Randall read the safeties and go away from the safeties. But if you only need five yards, normally you'll run an option of some sort into the flat. Fourth and four. Cunningham with an option to run or pass, but he's got Dexter Manley to deal with. And he will be ruled in the grass, which will wipe out an interception and a Washington touchdown by Monty Coleman. They're going to say that Cunningham was in the grasp and control. Dale Hamer, it'll be redskin ball, but Coleman would like to have had the touch. A semi-roll to the right. This pass is designed to get it to Byers in the flat, but it was Byers was covered. Now Cunningham coming First back down. to the back Let's side. First down. Looking back over the middle. And when he looked into the middle, Manley was there when he took his eyes off of him. Manley got his arms around him and then desperation to make something happen. Cunningham throws it up and Coleman makes the interception, but it's going to be called back. That's the third sack of the day. Coleman can celebrate. But the interception and touchdown is wiped out. And the Redskins, Joe Gibbs said, we just need a win. They are about to go to five and five, but they were in roughly this circumstance in game one when Gerald Riggs fumbled and Hopkins returned at 77 yards. Now timeout is called by the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, this is, if the Eagles do lose this game, Vern, you've got to think that has terrible, terrible uh, effect on the football team, having lost last week to a team everyone thought they would beat the Chargers coming in today, an Eastern division, and Buddy Ryan had said the second half of the season, we have to win those games to get it in the playoffs, and to lose to the Redskins here would, boy, that's just a hard road to overcome. Coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles H. Milton III. Our game today was produced by David Michaels, directed, directed by Bob Fishman. Welcome back, Bobby. And the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. Heath Sherman looking on. Well, six and four, and if the Giants win today, they will have a three-game edge on the Philadelphia football team second down that's Terry Orr in the backfield and Seth Joyner drops Jamie Morris the 15 yard line and they call their timeout once again Twenty four remaining in the ball game. Washington went up on a low Miller field goal then they got a touchdown from Ernest Biner and it was set up on a fourth and one pass Doug Williams to Jimmy Johnson and Joe Gibbs and the Redskins about to go five and five for the year. Well there's still a minute and twenty four left Vernon. I mean <laughs> I've seen some crazy things happen. How many timeouts Washington get? They got one left. They got one left. Third down, 
Redskins, do, will they try to get the first down? They need to get down, what, to the five-yard line, four-and-a-half-yard line? Call another timeout if it's a run. Hey, do you kick a field goal? Maybe you block it. Who knows? Jamie Morris is 38 carry, and now Philadelphia will call time once again. That'll be their final timeout of the ballgame, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now will uh, the Redskins go with a field goal and risk having it blocked? Wayne Severe is the special teams coach. He's the man who's gesturing by the side of Joe Gibbs. Says a minute 14 left. Plenty of time for the Eagles. If, if the Redskins kick a field goal, that sews it up. If they attempt a field goal, you can rest assured of this, that the Eagles will make an all-out attempt to block it. If they block it and pick it up, they can run it in, and then we've got a tie football game. So here comes your field goal. Here comes your field goal rush. Low Miller, perfect inside of 40 for the season. He is 15 of 15. This will be from 34 yards. Ralph Mojenko will hold it. Dave Harbor is the center. And here we go. Mojenko will hold, Dave Harbor will center. This would make it a 13 to 3 ball game. No good. No good. The Eagles will have a chance with no timeouts left. The last time these two teams met, I made this statement, it will take a miracle. And folks, it will take, once again, maybe not quite as great a miracle as the last time, but with a minute 10 left and an offense that for this day has struggled, Buddy Ryan, who made the comment, I always know our offense, turn it on and we can throw the football. Randall always makes five big plays. Well, he needs to make five big plays right now. Manley comes, Cunningham, Ron Johnson needs to get out of bounds, but instead he fumbles the ball. He had a clear path to the 35-yard line and the sideline. Eagles do recover. Bad mistake by Johnson. Catch it, get the first down, as much yardage, save the time, save the clock, get out of bounds. Forces Cunningham to kill it. Johnson was circling to his left and had a clear path to the sideline. Yeah, see... It's, it's one thing to make catches like this, and this is where you, the real stars have to play like stars, but you have to really be aware of what's going on and what people are doing, and once you make a catch, you have to be able to pre-read pre the secondary and know that, hey, I've got to get out of bounds. I have this lane available. You must sprint to the sideline and kill the clock. You don't have timeouts left to continue going down the field. 44 seconds remaining, first, second, and 10. by Washington across the middle Johnson now they'll hurry ball at the 44 yard line there's a player down back at the 41 Keith Byers is injured Byers is gonna have to play hurt smart and Cunningham went up and Byers here shot will leave the leave the game this is a desperation offense Deskins are trying to do is to give Cunningham completions underneath their zones. They want everything in front of them where they can see the receiver and then they want to come up and make the stop on them. But Cunningham has time now and now he's throwing the football deep 20, 15 to 20 yards deep over the middle. That's where it's going to happen. That's where he's going to be wide open. There's a motion from the officials to reset the 30-second clock, and they have now done so. Second down. Cunningham dropped by Brian Davis and Chris Carter. Oh, what a mix-up in coverage. Who would have thought this? The Redskins showed zone, Vern, and then jumped into man-to-man -man coverage. Unbelievable. The reason it's unbelievable is very simply, folks, if you want to get beat quickly in a football game, the quickest way to do it is to have my receiver to beat your defensive back, man, man for man. man. There's no help, and it's a touchdown. Third down and 10. 
16 seconds left, 10 to 3. And again, a three-man rush. Cunningham, rainbow in the end zone. Incomplete. Oh, that was close. If I were a coach and a defensive back, I hate that play. It absolutely will break your heart. Now fourth and ten. I mean, how many times have you seen it done? Where, well, with Minnesota, the Vikings against right. the Rams, needing 46 yards or needing to get down and get the field goal. Wade Wilson, 46-yard alley-oop pass. Four guys on one receiver made the catch. Here it is again, the Hail Mary. Seven seconds to go, fourth and ten. Five Redskins back, and the ball game is over. The Washington Redskins even their record at five and five and stagger the Philadelphia Eagles Handing them their fourth defeat of the season, their second in as many weeks. And Doug Williams and Jimmy Giles, best of friends from their days at Tampa Bay, congratulate each other at midfield. For Terry Bradshaw, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Veteran Stadium, where our final score was 10 to 3 Washington. Jamie Morris of the Redskins and Byron Evans of the Philadelphia Eagles have been chosen as the Miller Lite Players of the Game and qualify for Player of the Week honors. A $1,000 donation will be made by the Miller Brewing Company on behalf of the players to United Cerebral Palsy.